Their voices beckoned to us from a distant age, when an entire race of people relied upon the goodness the earth provided to feed their families, heal their wounds, and cure their ills. It was a different time, of course, in a very different world, long before Western medicine and its so-called miracle drugs relegated the ancient anecdotes of the Indian people to the realm of folklore and mysticism. But the Shoshone Indians, who were among the first desert people to live in the barren wilderness of Utah, still believe in the wisdom passed on by their elders about spiritual reverence for nature and a healthy use of the earth. We were taught at the early age that everything that surrounds us has life in it so that we could live in harmony with ourselves, with our people, with our surroundings, and in general with the whole world. We all believe that the earth was a mother and we all believe in the real sense that the earth does have life. That's what the old people have been saying all along. This is a story about human beings, people who were made well again. But it is also a story about the power of the Great Salt Lake, an aberration of nature, a desert sea, a place of quiet magnificence. And those who recognized the therapeutic value of these waters, as the Shoshone did, were able to be nourished and nurtured for generations. Our Indian people would use the waters from the lake, plants, herbs, and um, shrubs from this area for medical purposes. And it healed our wounds, healed our spirits, and made us realize this is a very sacred place. We believe in the power of the Great Salt Lake and the healing power of it. They drink that, that's when they get well, you know. I've heard my grandpa tells about um, the olden days, um, that there's something in that water there that cures. The real riches of the Great Salt Lake do indeed lie below the surface of the water. Let a container of Great Salt Lake water evaporate and it will still be a quarter full of crystalline minerals and trace minerals. These minerals are fundamental in the healing process of all kinds of different diseases, and maybe more important than that, keeping us well so we don't get sick. Dr. James Balch is one of the nation's most revered nutritional experts. His book, Prescription for Nutritional Healing, has sold in excess of one million copies, and is in nearly every health food store across the country. We must incorporate the idea of trying to maintain a state of well-being in our people. However, we doctors, unfortunately, are not trained in that mode of thinking. Our society, it seems, has been vaccinated with falsehoods about the merits of preventive therapies, infected with the skepticism of those in modern medicine whom we have allowed to manage our health. Yet, as Dr. Balch points out, there is much to learn from the simple remedies of the past. We need to get down to the basics, like the Shoshone Indian who told you that uh, they used things as simply as what grew along the side of the Great Salt Lake and the Salt Lake itself. I mean, that's essential and basic. We didn't go to the white doctors, so we depend on the minerals that's in the Great Salt Lake, and it's really helped our people. For nearly 30 years, one company has been tapping these ancient waters, waters saturated with minerals which have accumulated over thousands of years to create the foundation of a unique line of dietary supplements. They have a number of products that are related to stress, related to calming, related to uh, uh, working with the bones and the joints, working with the gastrointestinal tract, and we have had success with, to some degree, with all of the people who have tried these products. I was so happy to find the, what they were doing with the Salt Lake Minerals, because I think they're superior to anything I've used on the market. With few to support their beliefs, however, the beginning was an inauspicious one. I was a commercial pilot, a professional pilot, and uh, I took uh, Hartley Anderson, the uh, 
found her on the flight out over the Great Salt Lake. I didn't know at the time, he just wanted to go for a ride out there, but then he told me during the flight that he was looking for a spot where he could extract the Great Salt Lake water and get the minerals from it, and uh, so we were just a little uh, kind of hee-heeing about anybody wanting to do a thing like that. We, we grew up in a very small community, so everybody knew everything that was going on, and everybody knew about crazy Hartley Anderson and going out and dipping up uh, minerals from the Great Salt Lake. While people responded to his vision with indifference and disbelief, Hartley Anderson made the decision to involve his family in every aspect of the business that he could. I was in the third grade when the company was founded, so it was kind of fun to work together as a family. I remember working in the packaging and uh, cleaning floors and putting labels on bottles. And Dad believed in hard work, and, and we all got in and did it together as a family. And so there's a lot of memories of the family working together. I have an image in my mind of a time when Dad had the concept, but it wasn't happening like he felt like it should. And he says, I'm going to go out and, and sell. Loading up the station wagon. Loading the car down with, with product. Hawking the Pawning some of his belongings to get enough money to go. And getting enough money to get out on the road, but not quite enough money to get back again. He knew he'd have to sell a lot of product. Uh, to, to make it back. We had a huge garden. That's what we lived on while Dad was gone. And he would head out on the road for three weeks or so and call on the stores. Out pounding the pavement, and you know, that was the start. For a while, we'd get discouraged and think, oh, why are we doing this? And every time that we would get discouraged, someone would write us a letter or call us and say, oh, don't ever stop manufacturing these products. And we'd think, that's what we're in business for. This mindset might sound strange coming from a successful company. It has nothing to do, after all, with the bottom line mentality of Wall Street or the jaundice of the medical establishment. Rather, it is based on adherence to the common ideals of hard work, family, sacrifice, and a determination to better the lives and health of tens of thousands of people. I'm writing you this letter on a typewriter that I haven't been able to use in many years. They come from all over the world in the form years. of letters and phone calls, declarations of newfound vitality and rejuvenation. Dear sirs, I am writing this letter after waiting a year to do it because I just... All of the communications the share the deep-rooted feelings about time. turning points in the lives of people desperate for help. I was kind of numb on one side, okay? I was. I didn't know what it was, and, and so I found out that it was, it was poor circulation. She came in simply um, kind of at her wit's end. I want something natural. That's why I go to the health food store. I simply told her I had a product that she might like to try. And um, so she read, and she has been reading, so she was aware and familiar with some of the nutrients that were in there. And uh, I told her that the company offers a full money-back guarantee if she was not, um, you know, completely happy with the product. I said, I'm the type of person like this, I'm poor, and if it doesn't work, I am going to get my money back, and I'm going to tell her so. And she did try it, and she uh, told me that if she wasn't happy, that she would be back to tell me that she was either happy or unhappy. Because she knows me, because I looked at her square in the eye, I said, you're going to give me my money back if I don't work, and it did. It really did. I even tried it twice. I took it up. I got some more. And uh, she came back and she bought the product again. And now um, she has such great energy. That was what I needed because I do housework and I have to have energy to move. Many in conventional medicine are quick to dismiss testimonials like Elaine's as anecdotal, which Webster's Dictionary defines as an entertaining account of an event in one's life. So often, however, the maladies and suffering and disease are anything but amusing for the individuals involved and their families. I've had a degenerative hip for several years. And um, a few months ago, I started having terrible pains in my knee and complete leg. Three years ago, I got diagnosed with bursitis in my hips. And it was very painful. I'm a sports person. I play a lot of sports, soccer twice a week and so forth. And it got so I couldn't even, like, walk upstairs. It really was miserable. So 
Oh, I had put it up with that for quite some time, and I finally had decided I needed to go back to my medical doctor. I went to the doctor, you know, he diagnosed it, gave me the anti-inflammatories. Uh, those upset my stomach, so then they give you the other that, that helps the stomach, and it just, it wasn't working. I wasn't getting better. And he said he'd give me a few months, he'd start talking about surgery, and I said, I'm not ready for surgery. And he said, you will be in a few months. As I mentioned earlier, we doctors, unfortunately, are taught that there's a pill, a drug for every ill. And in fact, if that doesn't work, then send him to the surgical consultant. So I walked into the local health store and just kind of started looking over the shelves and picking things up. So I bought a bottle, took it home, and within like two weeks, it, the inflammation in my hips went away. I was back to not limping. I was being able to go play my soccer and, and do my biking and so forth, you know, my sports activities, and not have a limp. And basically, it's taken the pain right away. And within 10 days, it was amazing how well I was feeling. <laughs> Those spasms would come so often during the day. When people take our products, they notice an improvement in their health. We put our guarantees on that. People have to take responsibility for their own health. That is their body. And I never remember going in a doctor's office and, and seeing a sign up that says, if you don't feel better when you leave here, you don't have to pay. It doesn't exist. It does here. And we make products that can live up to that standard. I don't care how rich or how poor. If you end up in the hospital, you're going to have to pay a bill one way or the other. I reason to myself, if it's so-called expensive, I'd rather pay it on something that's going to help my whole body and it's not going to heal one thing and mess up another because that's what synthetic drugs do, period. Elaine, Donna, and Luann are just a few of the millions of Americans who have traveled through the labyrinth of our nation's healthcare system who are looking for a new path to wellness. When they first purchased products, they were unaware of the history of the Shoshone Indians and the Great Salt Lake. They just knew that the prescription drugs they tried and the surgical options that were presented to them were unacceptable. But when we pause to reflect, to a time when the buffalo ran wild along the shoreline of the Great Salt Lake, we are able to see that the ancient values of the Shoshone have withstood the test of time and are still being honored. I feel that the Indian people always regarded the earth as having its own spirit. And over the centuries, they have intuitively been guided to those things that could heal the body, the mind, and the spirit. It's nice to see how the world does, you know, the pendulum swings, that old things become new again. And you know, th those people were here for thousands of years. And when we get a little bit of respect for the things that they learned from nature and incorporate it into our lives, uh, you know, it, it makes a difference. Making a difference in the lives of others is what Hartley Anderson and his family dedicated themselves to nearly 30 years ago. They chose a road less traveled and were scrutinized for their belief in the power of the Great Salt Lake, like the Shoshone who came before them. But in truth, the Andersons have been richly blessed to have heard the silent call of the people that lived on the shores of these waters so very long ago. They have become stewards of products that are, in many ways, older than our republic, thousands of years in the making, gathered from the mountains, streams, and goodness of the Great Salt Lake.